Hello everyone, and welcome back to the jungles of the Fruitlease tribe, where we have just celebrated the birth of our very first proper bat. We have little Coco, as she has been given the name, here born with both wings, just at a time when Kumquat felt that he had received a, a vision, thanks to the birth of Persimmon, our very first toxic body nicheling on the entire island, and one of his latest children with Coconut, that they must learn to walk before they must learn to fly across these jungles. And the tale of the mystery Jean was actually discussed last time, realizing that somehow we have lost a gene that allows these nichelings to be both bat-headed and bat-winged and have a tail that allows them to collect fruit so they could actually be fruit bats. But we wrapped all of that up in the last episode. I'm going to be updating the wiki a little bit with the new current rule set of our defensive line who wander destroying the evil termites and the invasive plant species that have come to invade our wonderful jungle home. And I'm going to be explaining about the tale of the missing gene, which is quite literally about a tale in our niche wiki, which hopefully I have linked in the video description. So if you guys want to catch up on all that, I highly recommend checking out the previous episodes, checking out the wiki, because I am ready to wiki wiki, which for those of you who don't know in Hawaiian, which my family's Hawaiian, means go fast. <laughs> I'm ready to wiki wiki on this tale and see where we are going to take things today. So we're going to be continuing off based off of all of the lore and everything that happened last time and diving straight in. First off, we have indeed with Coconut now aged so old that I do not believe she will be able to truly have another child before she passes away. Um, but Coconut, the lore leader of the tribe, who hopes that one day her descendants will be the mothers of the moon mother bat and she can return once more to the jungle, giving birth to Coco. And I realized that there was no other name I could give this child but Coco because she is indeed our very first full winged bat and she is the perfect colors and cracker jaw of a cookie line nicheling. For those of you who are familiar with our cookie tree tribe, I can only assume that this is a sign from Mies, their goddess of the nut trees and the cookie trees. And I realized something, my friends. In our nicheling lore, Mies is the goddess of the nut trees and the goddess of cookies. And she, her, her patterning and her color is exactly what little Coco has been born with, brown with dark spots. And the cracker jaw is kind of like the line of her people. Well, is not the moon mother bat a sister, in a way, of Mies the goddess? Is the moon mother bat a sister goddess of Mies? Because the moon mother bat sends her children and her people out to plant these great jungle trees and the stinky fruit trees. I realized, staring at little Coco here, that it had to be her name because perhaps this is sort of a crossover blessing from the goddess Mies helping the almost lost moon mother bat whose name has even been lost to lore, only her title is left, whose people are so besieged that they are about to vanish. But what if this is a gift from Mies to, to help out the moon mother bat, her sister goddess? And I, I just, I feel like she had to give a little bit of her own luck from the cookie tree tribe and lineage because of course they would be sisters, a moon mother bat who encourages her people to plant gigantic jungle trees and spread jungle biomes to islands that are otherwise just barren rock and uh, who encourages her people to spread fruit trees and take care of them, just like Mies encourages her people to take care of nut trees. So I really feel like this is a sign from, from Mies. Mies. And I, I wonder if this little Coco will end up being very happy in this nut tree and perhaps have just a little teeny pinch of the cookie line in this tribe now too. But I was so excited to realize that little bit of crossover lore and I had to share it with all of you because clearly this is a great sign. Just as Kumquat had been willing to accept the humility, uh, the, like the humbly accept the humility, so not humiliation, but humbly and with humility, not humiliation, 
except that this tribe will always kind of have to be a combination of different traits that not everyone will be able to be winged and bat-headed if we want to eat of the sacred fruit well we had the birth of Coco, and I feel Coco and Persimmon are meant to work together. Persimmon is meant to really help lead the way uh, with quite a bit of collecting. She is the best collector on the island. She is meant to show that even though she is not winged, she is somebody who can take care of the sacred fruit. And I feel like she is meant to be kind of like a soul sister of Coco, who is to show that although she cannot collect any of the sacred fruit, with the help of her sister Persimmon, they can work together to carry on the lore line since now we have a double winged bat female who will clearly inherit coconut's position and become the the mother of hopefully eventually especially because she has one albinism trait the all white moon mother bat here in the heart of the jungle i i'm really excited because i feel like the birth of first persimmon and then Coco can be nothing less than a sign from above that we are supposed to have these two show kumquat that it is only by working together can they protect this jungle, help the tribe succeed, and also give, the, give rise to the moon mother bat again, since we do have the missing gene and cannot make fruit bats, much to my sadness. But all right, I'm very excited about that. Uh, we also need to deal with the fact that we do have a Berina a aggressive Berina, not a friendly Berina, but an aggressive one who has a child of her own to protect. However, these are invaders to the island. These Berina may very well be carrying the seeds on their fur. <gasps> There's the other invader! We will get you yet! We will get you yet! All of these are invaders to the island. Whereas the fruit lings in our stream tribe welcome wanderers because we must have someone to serve the royal snaws. Uh, the fruit lees here in this tribe chase the wanderers away because they are the source of all of these invasive plants and the invasive termites that are a threat to the jungle. So we need to get rid of the Berina. Also, I think it's here to eat Clem, and that is absolutely unacceptable. Uh, and we do need to keep an eye on the friendly Berina. I think even though it's friendly, ah, unless the wanderers would be willing to speak for it and maybe destroy a invasive plant to kind of, um, earn a place for the friendly Berina in the tribe. Uh, like, unless, yeah, unless the warriors, excuse me, not the wanderers, would be willing to do that, he might be food because he could be contaminated. His fur could be covered in all sorts of invasive seeds, and we simply cannot stand that. We must protect the jungle above all else. Uh, so wanderer, wanderer, we need to work our way over towards all of the sacred fruit trees and have a, a gatherer class to watch over them. We need a warrior class to go around and defend the island. And uh, we need to carry on with the lore line. So there's quite a bit going on. Let's just pick up from here. We do have Palm currently pregnant with Ginger's child. And she's still a little bit embarrassed that she almost had a fling with that wanderer. She thought he sounded just so exotic with those beautiful horns. But how could she forget her loyalty to the Fruitling line? They are they are a beleaguered population of fruit bats. There's only so many of them. And she, she almost lost her family. How could she forget? how important it is to be loyal to the tribe. So Palm is a little embarrassed about that, if you ask me. We also have Wakame, who is... Mm, he was rescued from almost drowning in this tide pool. And he doesn't have a lot going for him. But he will... Ooh, he does have the toxic body and the scorpion tail going for him, which is actually a lot, in my opinion. And so he does want to help protect this tribe. So I think we're going to go ahead and let him eat the healing plant because he's a little bit weakened. He's going to jump over and he's going to attack. So hopefully that used a toxic uh, toxic tail stab with his scorpion tail. So all right, let's do this. All right, with Wakame bravely diving in to defend little Clem. Little Clem, what can she do? Oh, she's actually got toxic body too. Hey, and they would make, nope, they wouldn't make good mates. They don't smell good to each other. They both have D immunity. Little Clem, oh, but she does have that scorpion tail. Oh, might be worth the risk. Is going to go ahead and run away. She is going to flee from almost being eaten by the Berina and eat some of these terrible termites because at least she may be too strong to fight the Berina. Too small, I mean, not too strong, not strong enough. But 
She is strong enough to eat the invasive evil termites that threaten the safety and security of the big trees. And then we're going to have Ginger jump forward. I don't think he can actually get ahead as far as I want him to. He is going to go ahead and attack. I think Palm is going to frantically stuff her face with berries uh, as a nervous reaction to being eaten to death, like almost eaten to death. She's going to just like, ah, I'm so terrified. And, just, and she's also very pregnant. So she's just like, nom, 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 nom. Stuffs her little face full of berries. Oh, she's so cute. And then we've got Squashy, who can't do much, but does have a bat wing, so she is still considered an official and protected part of the tribe. Is she near? She is not anywhere near, unfortunately. Oh, there's another one of the cookie trees over here. I didn't know we had a second cookie tree. That's good. She's not anywhere near um, another, another stinky tree, but there is a stinky tree over here that Star can't even collect at. So I think she's gonna go ahead. And I think Squashy, she was really threatened a lot as a baby by Danger 2. So I think she's a little bit of a scaredy cat. So we're gonna have her go ahead and start running this way. And she's going to come by Star's side. Star was chasing down that wanderer. And instead he has found these, these little bundles. They might actually go after. I think they would get rid of them because they might be threats to the stinky fruit trees. And then we have got Little Persimmon, who is going to need a healing plant. And I think we have one down here, but there's several on that side. So, hmm, I think she'll just kind of stay in the area. And then we have got Coconut, who I feel, yeah, even though she has four days left and so does Kumquat, I feel that she feels the birth of Coco and Persimmon are clearly signs she doesn't need to have any more children. She needs to listen to the ones that she does have. <gasps> and apparently being willing to step free from the heart of the island and admit that her time as the the mother of the lore line is over has unlocked water body and gills what we could make like water bats that's actually something we could probably do because there's no reason i don't think that we couldn't stick water body instead of the other types yeah i mean i i'm pretty sure like coco has big body and heat body Neither of those things are going to help us very much on this island. So I wonder if Coco is going to become like a water bat. <gasps> and maybe Kiwi's influence can return to this line and we might be able to do fishing. So we may not be able to be fruit bats anymore. But what if we adapt and we have both a fruit line to take care of the moon mother bat's sacred fruit trees and a fishing bat line. <gasps> okay, I'm going to go ahead and give Coco... Um, I mean, and I guess she, we wouldn't want to have her have gills because eventually we would want her to have, um, we'd want her to have bat head, but I'm going to go ahead and give her water body, uh, as, as a nod to the fact that coconut just unlocked that. Um, and persimmon, I'm going to leave persimmon as she is because she has toxic body. So we're going to just leave Persimmon as that. But I, I just feel it's yet another, another gift and another sign from above for Coconut, who has been the lore leader of this land for so long. Uh, can she do anything with bugs, by the way? She cannot and neither can Kumquat. Quite the pity, because there are these uh, toxic termites, or these, like, dangerous, destructive termites. In real life, termites are, of course, wonderful creatures that add a lot to the health of forest. Uh, but we, we must say that these are an invasive species of termite that threaten the well-being of the jungle trees. And that would be a pity. Look at how leafy and beautiful these are. I would be so sad if they were destroyed by termites. That would be kind of cool if the trees could actually get taken over by termites. And if you didn't eat them over enough days, like they actually disappeared, that could be kind of cool. But anyway, yeah, this is so surreal having coconut be done having babies. I think we're going to go ahead and, okay, those are toxic termites, so we can't really do anything about that anyway. We're going to have her and Kumquat kind of slow down a little bit. Is it safe to come over here? Yes. Kind of begin to slow down and maybe have a bit of a discussion over their last days. And I think on this island, because these plants are not ancestor plants like they are for the Fruitling Stream tribe, they're danger plants. I think we may say that the heart of the jungle, hmm, 
the heart like the water at the heart of the jungle might be where we would want our bones to be washed into the jungles like the soil in so i might have our elders pass away in the water line um so that their bones could be washed clean so that they shine white like the moon mother bat and they could become one with the heart of the jungle here which would really make a pile of like bones eventually but it would be seen as a special thing not a really creepy thing plus the water would keep the island like clean so i think that'll be good all right little kiwi here i think may have inherited as much curiosity as her namesake and sees the friendly barina on the other side so despite the frantic uh warnings of radish who is trying to look over his two younger siblings we're gonna go ahead and have kiwi jump across to see what this is all about Little Artichoke is too small to do much, but Lurzu wants to take Artichoke under his paw. Uh, and also, we need to get some food. So he's going to help Little Artichoke get some food. And Radish is concerned about his sister, by far, uh, but he's not the best warrior. Hmm. And he actually might want to start looking for a mate of some kind, and all of his sisters will not do. <laughs> Palm? I mean, Palm could be a good potential mate for him, but she's got terrible infertility. Oh man, Radish might need to start looking for a mate. Do we have a tree trunk in the jungle? I think Radish is going to start feeling a little conflicted about his own future. Like, who will he find? So we're going to let him start doing more exploring so that he can try to do what he can to defend and take care of the jungle. And Artichoke is just going to stay close by Lurzu, I think. There we go. Is that everybody? That is everybody. Uh, there's the Wanderer! You are not forgiven, Karnu! Uh, even though you have toxic body and sticky tongue. Would that be something squashy might fall for? No, they have, like, identical immunity. That would be a terrible idea. Absolutely. Oh, but they do have toxic body. I don't know. I think something about Karnu's horns. We'll have to see if Star can chase him off first, or if Squashy perhaps falls for the derp-snouted, long-horned, swimming-tail male that she'd probably have an unhealthy baby with. Hmm. Okay. There's some doom going on. Who got hurt? Did anyone get hurt? I heard somebody get hurt. I could have sworn. But yeah, no one's bleeding. That's a good thing. Interesting. Uh, we don't have enough attack, but we've got scorpion tail. So we didn't actually, oh my gosh. So Akame is throwing himself into the battle, but he can't do much. Oh my goodness. He was not able to do anything. I think Ginger might have been attacked. Oh, we're throwing ourselves into it. <gasps> Karnu has given Star the slip. Star is going to go ahead and try to deliver his blows to tell Karnu to get out of here because he is invasive, but he just ran into the waiting arms of Squashy, who I cannot help but feel. Uh, yeah, so she's from the original line. I want, all oh my gosh, Kumquat, you have bothered the entire jungle. I want to go through next time and make sure that every single one of the like Kumquat and Coconut's line have the Batwing uh, for sure. But I think Squashy, minding her own business here, might be um, might be enticed by Karnu here. He has terrible fertility, but he does have that toxic body. And I, I just feel like Squashy might be led astray a little bit. I'm also gonna go ahead and give her nimble fingers just because we do need more collectors for more food. So I'm gonna say that into her arms, Karnu runs trying to escape from Star's defense of the island and Squashy who is normally terrified by Berina, cannot help but stare at the beautiful long antlers and and be swept off her feet. <gasps> and he did leave! Oh, tragedy! Oh, now Squashy is left behind uh, with a child that she doesn't know how to explain where it came from. Karnu is trying to rush off, but right into Kumquat's waiting like arms. Uh, and Kumquat is going to go ahead and try to clear out this wanderer now. Is he going to manage it? 
Oh my gosh, we cannot attack this guy enough to get him out of here. And Coconut also wants to see this, this creature removed from their presence. I don't know if she would have a lot of aggression in her though, because she is, uh, she is one of the, oh, he stole some of the roots. <gasps> That's unacceptable. He's still in our food. I think Persimmon, who is a gatherer, is coming to see all of this. She's naturally drawn towards, um, naturally drawn towards the sneaky fruit trees. And her sister Coco will hopefully be joining her soon, but we need to destroy that nest, I just realized. So Lurizu's gonna come and help the baby. He's watching over the babies. We're gonna go ahead and let Radish. We need food, we need food. Radish is going to continue his exploration of the jungle. There's a peaceful bear. Don't don't panic, Radish. I have a feeling Radish is like gonna have a heart attack when he stumbles on that. All right, little Kiwi is gathering some food now. Little Clem, we're still trying to defend ourselves. Palm is going to once again stuff her mouth in franticness, which gives us just enough food to survive the day. Clem actually is a great gatherer as well. So I'm gonna have her come over here. There we go. Yeah, three gathering is fantastic. And she'll kind of be in charge. I think because she doesn't have a bat wing, she might be in charge of berry bushes. You get better pickings the more bat-like you are, is what I'll say. And then Karnu is still running about, but has left behind a child with Squashy. And we only have two days. Oh, Makami! We only have two days left with, um with our wonderful coconut and kumquat. We just lost the original two over in the Fruit tri Fruitling tribe as well. So this is a little hard, but we are all set up guys. We had to really pivot on our lore. So I apologize that I'm getting rid of this before I forget. We had to uh, pivot a lot on our lore and getting things going again. Cause I had to kind of consider how Nice and the moon mother bat might be sisters. And I had to kind of set everything up, but now we're going. And that means that next time we will really carry off a pace and we will have to see what child squashy has will it be a little sickly creature that she may perhaps try to guide all the way over to an abundant area of the healing fruits or will it be a child that may be um clearly not one of the fruit bat line and in one that she might have to hide the existence of or one that might end up having to risk their their life by exploring the jungle and attacking carnivorous plants in order to find a place in the tribe we will have to see and we will have to see what happens when our two special twins grow up and uh start leading the tribe as the new lore leaders so, all right, thank you guys so much for joining me. If you could, do please leave a like to toss a wonderful, delicious fruit to our wonderful fruit lees. And if you would like to join us with our Nicheling Pantheon, do please consider subscribing for this and literally hundreds more niche stories. They're there waiting for all of you with an expanding wiki to explain who the heck everybody is, because I too can sometimes become confused. <laughs> so, all right, guys, thank you so much for sharing your time with me, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.